All right, Snooks, uh, from this is from Kotaku. Uh, I just had to bring this up because it was really funny, but I don't want to take credit for it because I reckon that's a little bit scumbaggy, but <laughs> I thought this was giggle worthy. It says here, here mm-hmm. are the platform. They had a list. It was a pretty cool list. Here, here are the platforms that you can play Skyrim on. PC, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. And... Here is a list of the platforms that you cannot play Skyrim on. Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo Wii U, iOS, Android, (laughs) Windows Phone, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation Vita, Graphic Calculator, and Automatic Telemachine. And then there's a correction at the end here. (laughs) These are actually the platforms that you cannot play Skyrim on yet. Yet. I laughed when I read that. I'm like, that is so true. It's only a matter of time before you can punch out a bit of uh, Skyrim while you're trying to take 20 bucks out of the ATM. <laughs> and now in VR. <laughs> That's right. All right, well, let's start the show. Press start. This is episode 196, and today is Tuesday, the 21st of November, 2017. Welcome to the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. I am your host, Lucas, and here with me is my co-host and very good friend, Snoogs. How are you, mate? Oh, it's getting close. Getting close to the, the, the 200? The, the bus- no, the business end of the year, mate. Oh, is that what you're talking about? We're getting a bit yeah. Christmassy. The- Christmas and you know I've got all these Christmassy people at work and people all counting down to the end of the year. And I'm yeah, well, like, I just, just don't I, want it. I put up a, a YouTube video yesterday, I think, and I mentioned Christmas, and then I thought, oh, better quick backpedal. I know it's only November still. People are gonna crucify me because it's not December yet. But anyway, it is getting close, and we're starting mm. to feel that Christmassy cheer. It's warming up in Australia, if you're listening to this uh, in, in America or yes, on the o- other side of the hemisphere. It's actually hot in Christmas for us. It, uh, it starts 20, to heat 26 up. degrees indoors in my office. Right now? Right now. Yeah, there you go. 26 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Yeah, Otherwise, not, we'd not be Fahrenheit. I'm not sitting freezing. in snow. Yeah, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Anyway, well, actually, let's find out. 30 degrees is zero. Oh, in Fahrenheit, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. How, what? 30 degrees Celsius is zero Fahrenheit. No, 30 degrees Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. Oh, yeah, but what's it the other way around? So, you know, know. convert 30 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. You're upside down up there. What's upside down? The bloody Yanks. Oh well, no. Well, they All say we're the upside front. down ones because they're the uh, they're the heart of the world. Just just ask them. Eighty six degrees Fahrenheit right now in your office. It's probably similar to mine, if not a bit warmer because mm. I've got a few more kilowatts coming through me PC. But anyway, <laughs> uh, before we start, here is this week's show in preview. First up, we'll do video game news. No, we won't. That's out of order. First up, we'll do video game discussion. <laughs> Then we'll do video game news. And in this week's news, we've got EA in hot water with Disney, 10 years of Uncharted, and Gadget of the Year. Then we'll do user-created content, which has got something to do with Game of the Year. Then we've got What's That Sound and some last words. So let's go into our first segment, which is contrary to my first error, is actually video game discussion. Right, Snoogs, are you going first with video game discussion, or am I going yes. first? Yes, no, I'm going first. Bugger off. All right. <clears throat> my turn. Well, my, I I'm, shall I'm yield. Jump, I'm, I'm jumping in because I have something very exciting to talk about this, this week. I bet you don't. Something, I, I bet I do. I bet I do. Mm, we'll yes, see. Do. Uh, <laughs> Not going so yeah. good so far. <clears throat> Not so good so far. No, no, so lots more Destiny 2 out this week. Uh, you and I have even had a run around on it. And I did. I played well, that with you. How did you have that power over me? Ah, come on, let's go and have a run. And then I said yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There might have been beers involved. 
but it was all right. See, so. <laughs> I, I'm a bit simple with that kind of thing. If if there is something like, if you are going to get a, like bust open a brewski, give me a heads up and I'll do the same. But I don't know. I never think about it. No. No, it's just uh, I'm just not that much of a drinker. But if 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 I know yeah, somebody well, else not, is having a drink, so even much anymore. even if it's yeah. uh, over a, a game, like a, what do you call it, a multiplayer mm. game online, I'll still have one with you. Yeah, we'll have one quiet one every now and again. That's all right. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. I've done a bit oh. more of the um, Frozen Wilds DLC. Yeah, the, yeah. Do you, have you yes. have you done the uh, Snow Angels? No. Oh, uh-huh. you can do Snow Angels. Ooh, I have not seen that yet. Oh, th- thanks for watching my review. Well, I watched most of it. Oh, I didn't want to watch too much. No, no, I didn't want to watch too much of it because I was playing it shortly after. Oh, go away. There's no spoilers in my reviews. I don't care. Well, there would have been because no. I would have seen doing Snow Angels instead of finding it out for myself, which yeah, has but... now been spoiled by someone. <laughs> Yeah, but if you never know about it, you're never going to see it. You've got to go into photo mode for it. No, okay. Oh, no, I've well, spoiled how to get it now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm such a big meanie. Now I know. You. Oh, it's not even worth playing now. Yeah, no, I'll put it back on the shelf. Yeah. But, um, well, one thing I do, I did want to uh, want to point out, the, um, the fact that in certain areas underneath the snow, the grass is still rendered in. I did see that. I saw a post on that somewhere. Oh, I was I was watching it the other night and watching the grass the grass flick back up. I'm like, really? They've gone to that much trouble? You could well, have just is you know, it trouble left it as or a complete they, whiteout. They've just they've just uh, layered the snow over the top. Really, uh, yeah, essentially, it still, it's probably it still a shortcut. Flicks up and moves and it was already there. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> I suppose now when you look at the bloody naysayer. <laughs> yeah. You and your logic. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. But it looks cool anyway. It, do, it does look good. There is no doubt in that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I've been playing a... <clears throat> I'll, skip, I'll skip the last big one on the, on the PS4 because we'll come back to that and talk about it a bit more in depth. If you must. But on the, on the Xbox, I've been playing a couple of uh, little games with my little ones. Mm, on so, the Xbox. Yes, over on the Xbox, I've been playing a game called Disney Rush. Oh, yes. So, so what you do is you uh, go and create a little avatar, which both of my girls have done, and you have this little cut scene where a bus pulls up and your little character steps out of the bus and it's okay, here's your uh, field trip day and you run off into a park. And you got you actually control the characters to run off into the park. When you get into the park, there's all these little Disney stories. So you've got cars, you've got uh, like all Pixar stuff. <clears throat> okay. So you've got cars, you've got uh, Finding Dory, you've got Toy Story, you've got Up and Ratatouille. I think was the other one. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there's all these little little areas where you go over to them. And you then become this little character that goes and has a race. And very Disney, very uh, empowering for a kid. It's not stupidly easy, but you don't get uh, punished either. Uh, so you can, it's just, a, <clears throat> just like a, a running game where your character starts running, you move side to side. And you've got to jump up and over things, collect coins, just that that basic sort of stuff. Yeah. And but you're you know in this world, so you've got in, you know finding Dory, you've got Dory swimming with you and racing against you through the coral reef, and then you come out and you get to bounce across the jellyfish, and then you um, once you get through the jellies, you're into the East Australian current with the turtles and whales, and you're swimming around between all of them, which is really cool. Uh. Cars, you're racing against Lightning McQueen. Ratatouille, you're running across the rooftops with another mouse to uh, free somebody. Right. So it's like a bunch of mini games. Yeah, just a bunch of mini games. Just, you know, each of them um, takes, you know, a couple of minutes each. And it's just enough for the for the kids to have a bit of a play with it. Is it fun for you to play? 
Yeah. Oh, geez, you're not real good at being convincing tonight. No, well, I'm, I'm trying to put an adult hat on, but when it comes to Disney, that's very hard. You know, Disney's, for anyone that, that's, well, for anyone really, Disney's got a special place, you know. It's, I, I still love watching the Pixar movies. I still really enjoy them. I get, you know, the world that they create is absolutely brilliant. So for me to be able to sit down and play and, you know, just have a, a carefree laugh about it, it's fantastic. And the fact that I can sit there and race and, and do these little, um, little puzzles and whatnot with my daughter just sells it for me every day of the week. It's absolutely brilliant. But yeah, what, what, I re- what I really want to know is, like, I mean, kids are going to love this stuff probably regardless of how well they play, but is it a well-made game? Like, I know it's is not it going to be any, yeah. like, mind-blowing stuff in there, but, like, does it feel good yeah, to play? Well, yeah, well, there's I've, um, I've had no glitches, uh, no screen issues, no drops, anything like that. Obviously, it's not, you know exactly taxing on anything so you're intuitive not get it. you know what you're doing like you play it and you're like oh yeah i know what i need to do here <clears throat> yeah yeah yep so uh it's it follows the basic rules you know every, every video game's got rules that we all sort of know and and just sort of um instinctively follow mm-hmm. and it's all got that sort of stuff as well uh controls are very tight very responsive and it can actually get quite competitive and when you actually start getting in there and and really wanting to race because you've got a timer up the top and you got, you also um, get a reward at the end. So once you finished, you get a reward for, you know, how many coins you've collected and how, how much time it's taken. So obviously the quicker you are, the more points you get. And that then goes to a leveling up sort of system where you can actually level up and play a, uh, like another le- like another level or or another type or as another character. Okay, sounds like the yeah. like the next evolution in the uh, Disney Infinity games, just without those annoying expensive figurines. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, and it just it's kind of just feels like a um. Uh, oh yeah, it's just a three a three D platformer really that you're more you're sort of running through the world and jumping and moving and. Then you come up to a section where you've got to use both of you. So one of you will have to go and stand on a platform, then the other one will jump on a button and the platform will lift up and and go to the next level and you jump and pull down a a chute for your store to jump up into. A bit under the radar, this game. I I didn't really hear much about it until it was out. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, it just just sort of come out at the the same time as the the one. As the what? As the one X. Oh, it's the one X, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. sneaky little yeah, so, uh, release there. Yeah, so I sort of stuck out as as one of those ones, but yes, right. very cool. And also along the same sort of vein, uh, another one called Disney Kingdoms, which, for all intensive purposes, is a virtual reality wander around. Not virtual reality is in the the headset on, but you again make this this avatar that. Um, is in Disneyland. Oh, okay. So you get to run around Disneyland as these little people and there's other other families there and they're all interacting and uh, you go to all every sort of world from Disneyland's there. The rides are there, but the rides that you go on, they're, they're not like you sit in a, a roller coaster thing and, and buzz around a roller coaster or anything like that. You fly to another world like there's one where you go and meet up with peter pan and it's the same sort of thing as uh disney rush it's a flight through london so you're flying behind peter pan trying to catch up with him with tinkerbell is this a complete separate game uh i believe so well they are they're they're two games but i think they kind of flow into each other okay but they're they're separate icons you load into one or the other yeah, they're separate icons on the screen. Yeah, okay. Another one and I didn't even know your, existed. <clears throat> one's more your more focused on your Disney, like old school Disney. Mm-hmm. So your your Peter Pan, your your princesses, your um, Mickey and Donald, and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. And the other one's more your Pixar sort of focus. What about Fantasia? 
I haven't seen Fantasia yet, oh, but it does idea. have. Um, what's that? It's a small world. Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, but, doesn't matter. Yeah, you'll. When, but like as as you're running around, <clears throat> and um, my my two little ones are, are very much in uh, involved in the princesses at the moment, and so they're looking around and oh look, there's the there's the big Disney castle, and they ran through the castle, and then automatically there's you know Princess Aurora or Sleeping Beauty is there on the left hand side, and they both lost their mind, so they thought it was absolutely fantastic, the best thing they've ever done. And, oh, that's um, lovely. Well, there you go. For any um, mm. mums and dads gamers out there that want a game for their kids, these ones sound like the way to go, I think. Yeah, definitely. But and I the little ones can actually it. dance. Huh? With, oh. Well, you can actually dance with the characters as well. That's what I thought was, was brilliant. You can dance if you want to. Well, they You they can leave could. your friends behind. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, on to the big one that I've been playing this yes, week. Yes, come on, come on. What is it? Come on, come on, come on. Um, well, it's, it's a game that I didn't think I'd be getting my hands on again. Mm -hmm. It's something that we've talked about a couple of times and, ah, hell, hell with it, Skyrim in VR. On the fridge. (laughs) On the fridge. (laughs) Skyrim VR. All right. So (laughs) Skyrim PSVR. Oh my. Someone wrote on the page when I put up about it, is this the game that makes me buy VR, that makes us buy VR? Yeah. Well, it might be. Why? It, what is... <clears throat> look, all right. Well, the first time a dragon came in and opened up his mouth in front of me and breathed fire, I felt heat. There was I, I got a blast of heat in the face from it. Yeah, that's the PlayStation 4 Pro's fan blowing shit in your face. <laughs> it's dying. It's, it's trying to render it all in. <laughs> no, it is <clears throat> it is it is so immersive. I have I have never been this drawn into the game whatsoever into how, any VR how do you, game. How do you play it? Like physically, still, how do you play it? Still with the dual shock. Okay. So you can use the move controllers if you want. Oh, you know what, I, what I really want to know is with the with the I assume you're using two of the move controllers. How do you move? How do you walk? It's um I was describing this today. It's exactly the same. So you've got your your two well, the, well the move controllers. I don't have move controllers. Do they have stump sticks on them? No, they don't. Well then I don't know. Yeah, that's that's what I'm lost at. What, what I'm thinking is maybe there's a button you press that just makes you walk forward yeah, there, and you turn your head to turn. There was was something in the in the release notes that I was reading about it that says there is a um like a teleport function where you're sort of teleporting forward. You know, like Oh, you or, point where you want to go and click. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And a screen goes black for a second, you, you jump across. Don't do it. Don't worry about the move controllers. Doesn't sound just like it. Just play it. Just play it with a dual shot. So how do so, you how do you aim? Is it normal or do you use your, your head, head or with your head? And it is. Head. It's a trick. It's hard to get used to. Well, it's well, hard for that, me to try and. Resident Evil mm-hmm. Seven. That was how you aimed in that, and I liked it because yeah. I was able to precisely aim using my head. Stupid as it yeah. sounds, because well, you're just looking at what you want to hit. Yeah, but um. You you also forget you know the uh, the distance of the bow. So I found myself a few times where I wasn't holding onto the bow long enough to pull it back far enough, and before letting it go. So I was pointing at someone, the arrow would just drop in front of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I changed the way the move function works. So the left hand, the the left left stick pretty much controls your speed of movement. You know, um, well, pretty much controls your legs. The right controls your body. So yeah. if I want to move forward, back, and strafe left or right, I've got the left left trigger to do that. The right trigger pretty much just turns your body. Uh, triggers or sticks? Sticks, sorry. Sticks. 
Losing your mind yeah. there. Confusing me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. That's <laughs> no, all right. Forgiven. Don't do it again. Uh, <laughs> the what else did, there was something else i wanted to know that i i can't seem to fathom uh no i don't know what what's it uh what's it look like the the downscale um that's where you can be forgiven for going yeah it's um it kind of feels like you're back on the ps3 mm, yeah the graphics are always <clears throat> When it comes to VR, but yeah, you, know, you kind of got yeah, to when, give it a leap. When you see some, of the, when you see some of the newer stuff coming out, and you look at the graphics on that, it looks absolutely brilliant. Mm. When you, but when you play this, you can tell you're playing an older game, but yeah, you are you are completely in this world. So, from the moment I, I was actually streaming it when I first played it, and had a had a few people ask me different questions and whatnot, and one person in particular asked me. How much time did I spend on the character creation screen? Oh, and not too long. My answer was about thirty seconds, because that's all I did. You know, I've I've spent time in the past where you change everything and you tweak your character to look a special way. And I'm like, well, no, I'm playing this whole game in first person mode, so I don't care. <laughs> you know, yeah, just would... I picked what race I wanted to be, and um, changed it like that. Can, can you even play it in? third person i wouldn't imagine you could no you wouldn't it, you'd lose it it'd, it would it'd break be, the immersion yeah yeah it, it'd be absolutely pointless yeah but um yeah the the things like the the snowy areas the um you know you know how we've always said the phrase when you go skyrimming up the, yeah, up the up side the of the mountain yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah that is actually quite freaky to do now yeah, there was, there was a few times when I'll, there's there's one particular mission very very early on where you've got to go up onto this top of this mountain peak to go into a into a dungeon, mm-hmm. and I'm climbing up the side of the mountain and I'm actually on the path and I can feel myself pushing further and further back into the chair because I'm trying to look up the mountain <laughs> and it's just not working. It's like, well, this is this is not good, uh, and you're sort of climbing up. And then I stopped and I turned around and got instant vertigo because of how high up I was. And it was brilliant. Mm. Absolutely well, loved it. When you feel like you can pry your greasy scar and fingers off it, I'll have a go. I'll, I'll take it off you for a, for a bit and yep. give it a try. We'll it sounds like a plan. Yeah, in a later episode. It's... Uh, I... Uh, I don't deny that I'm a fan of Skyrim. I've, you know, put a stupid amount of hours into it in the, on the PS3. Stayed away from the PS4 because I didn't want to put those hours in again. But it's just everything come flooding back. And the fact that it's all right there in your face, you know, I've got my first shout now. I've taken down a dragon. Taken down, taking down a dragon in first-person mode when you're that close up, and you stand there and these jaws come across in front of, in front of you and, and snap. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's just, there's something about it. And the, the fact that you've got these two hands in front of you, so the, they kind of float a bit, which is a little bit annoying. I would, I would like there to be a body attached Are to you. Are they floaty kind of, gloves? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a um, staple. But, when you when you're just fighting standard, it doesn't um you don't really see it because you 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 just see the hands. If you, it's only when you look down that you actually have to uh, you actually notice that you don't have a body, really. Yeah. But um, yeah. Other than that, it's yeah. I can't fault it. I've had absolute ball. That's cool. The only thing that disappoints me is that it's once again it's like. Like how much is it? A hundred bucks? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a hunch. Yeah, see that come on. It should not be. Look yeah. number one, it's a VR. Look, I know it's a full it's the full title. It's VR. But mm. like if you wanna if you wanna sell this, this game's if someone's keen on playing this on in VR, they've probably already bought it a couple of times. Yeah. And you're kinda yeah, gonna it. harm its re- like it's <laughs> 
its sales by making it full price again. Because how many times are you going to buy the same game? You know, like that's it should have been an, an, a if it what if you, they wanted to charge for it, it should have been a slight sort of charge, twenty thirty bucks to go on top of uh, Skyrim if you already owned it. Yeah, well, someone like um, you know, uh, a few of the a few of the games have done. They've got they've got their standard one, and then it's another, you know, twenty it, thirty bucks. Yeah, like dirt. I think yeah, it was like dirt, dirt exactly. It. And then you've got the VR version of it as well. Yeah, which which is a little bit on top, which I think they should have mm. done here instead of charging a full price for a standalone. But anyway, that's what it is. Sounds like you love it. I reckon it'll be a good game for anyone that loves it. It'll probably go good on VR. I'll, I'll give it a go yeah. in, in the future. Yeah, I'll, br- I'll bring it around. Next time we catch up, I'll bring it over. Sounds good. Mm. And right. uh, what else? I think that's it for me, mate. That's it? That's All it, right. yeah. All right, I've always got a pretty big list. Let me go through here. I'm going to get uh, the elephant that's in the room because it's getting really hot in here. I'm going to kick him out. Big white elephant called Sonic Forces. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you see the review? Yes, I saw the review. Wasn't I really polite in saying it wasn't very good? Yes. How good am I at that? Very. You know, I, I you, could be a car salesman. You could be. Yeah, good you, reason um... <laughs> anyway. I, oh, I, th- I think you handled it, it quite well. It could have gone either way. Yeah. Well, look, uh, I, I, we, we provided a, a review copy uh, free of charge, Sonic Forces. I played it this week, and I was looking forward to Sonic Forces for a long time, and I played it at the EB Games Expo, and I liked what I saw. The final product, however, the rest of the game is not exactly what I was expecting, which is a bit of a shame. Look, same as what I was saying about the Disney games, kids are going to love it no, no matter what, because it's bright, it's colourful, things happen, Sonic's got cool characters, he's got cool friends, and blah, blah, blah. The only thing is, I picked it to pieces because there's a large portion of the game that's pretty much just automated. You know those those 3D Sonic games where you're running away from the camera and you're jumping over the enemies and collecting rings and all that sort of stuff? There's a lot of that. And when I say a lot, that's the predominant style of the game. But the thing okay. is, in those modes, all you're really doing is holding forward. Sometimes you don't even need to hold anything, and you're pressing the jump button. And then Sonic has this ability where if you just tap the jump button, he automatically hones in on the enemies, hitting them and blowing them up. So really, mm-hmm. a lot of the gameplay is hold forward, mash jump, and that's about it. And then there's, uh, uh, like I said, uh, a, a fair bit of the game where you you don't not even required to press anything. There is even a point in the game that I was dying because I was trying to play the game, and then when I finally realised what I was doing wrong, which was pressing a button, the game wanted to do it for me, but as I was jumping, it was sort of ruining the automation and throwing me off, and the attack wouldn't occur. This was in a boss fight. And it was frustrating. I mean, I realized that what I needed to do was nothing. I beat the boss pretty much immediately, and uh, which which was disappointing. So there is... Uh, what, I, what I should explain is there is a, a couple of different modes because uh, early on in the game, Sonic is, is defeated and you create your own avatar character, which is essentially one of Sonic's friends. He becomes like the new recruit. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're playing as the new recruit you can you'll you'll be playing in the like the 3d sort of automated sort of levels and when you're playing as new sonic which is the sonic that gets captured same same deal there but then another sonic from an alternate universe which is like it's kind of like them a sort of cheeky way of them bringing in old sonic so like sonic from the platformers and yeah. uh, he looks slightly different. He's got like a rounder body and all that sort of stuff. And that old Sonic, when you play as him helping out to rescue new Sonic, that's when you do the platforming, uh, the old school platforming, but with the nice, smooth, you know, 1080 graphics. There's not enough of that because that's what I wanted. That I wanted more of that. I would have loved a full game 
with the, with the graphics of Sonic Forces, but the gameplay of the original games. So like a, just a side-scrolling platformer. I absolutely hated the 3D stuff. And I think that's been the case for many years now. But they well, that's that's always been its downfall. Everyone's been, well, me included. You know, I've been screaming for a for a rebuild of of the original Sonic, um, or which, even which just, is Sonic Mania. Yeah, yeah, and he's fantastic. And even, even if it's just you know something that's, you know, even something like Super Lucky's, but with with Sonic, you know, where you've got the three D yeah. sections, but it's mostly made up of of those uh, 2D side-scrolling stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that's what I would want, mm. something like that. But I, I don't think Sonic Forces hits the mark. I checked out some other reviews, and it's it's got good reviews, saying that this is probably on par with Sonic Colors and uh, is, is far from one of the worst Sonic the Hedgehog games. It's great and all this, and I didn't feel any of it, really. I finished the campaign in three four hours it was it was short like there's plenty of replayability because the the coolest thing in there is that avatar character that you can create because you can rent characters so you can take other people's custom made characters once you finish the game you can mix it up make another avatar you can change the weapons different uh, races so you can be like a dog cat bird hedgehog a whole bunch of other ones as well that i can't remember and they've all got different buffs so one might be when you get hit, you don't lose all of your rings or when you die, uh, you'll come back with some rings. There's all these different buffs, which is really cool. So there's plenty of replayability stuff that you'll miss, but hmm. I didn't want to go back and play any of it because I didn't enjoy it. That's a shame. It is a shame. Yeah, when Sonic Mania there, exists. You just don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. The story was good. Like as much as it's a like a kid's story, I, I found the story intriguing, and that's probably what kept me going uh, mm-hmm. to find out how it ended, which was a typical ending. But I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that portion of it. It's not a massive disaster, but it was a letdown for me. So, do you think it's it's been made that way just to make it easy enough for or accessible for kids? Uh, look, maybe uh, there was some platforming, like when you did do the, the side scrolling stuff, some of that was really hard and, mm. uh, I can't, like, I can't imagine the kids ever finishing it cause like kid kids, like it, cause it got yeah. real hard in some places. It's just the 3d stuff that there was, I think, I think the automation part is there for theatrics because the camera goes all over the place and it looks amazing because you see the world that they've built, which is great, but most of it's all for visual effect because you can't go there because it's all fairly linear. So I I think that's what the automation parts are, just so they can go wild with the camera and show off how pretty the game looks. And it does look pretty, but you're just not playing it. Not really much of a video game. There's just not enough there. Yeah. Yeah. But not anyway, look, go and, go and check out people listening. Go and have a look at the Aussie Games Express YouTube channel. I've got a review up there. It's about five minutes worth. It uh, might be worth your time if you're thinking about getting it. Uh, but don't let me deter you if, if you think that that's something you want. Because if you're happy with all those things, it, it's actually a good game. There's plenty there. I just put me personally, I, I didn't enjoy it. Wasn't wasn't enough there for me. But anyway, I'll move on. I finished Super Mario Odyssey. Finally got the time to 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 finish that off. So the mm. uh, the obvious ending there by defeating Bowser. Oh, spoiler alert! Uh, and Peach was in another castle. Uh, no, but once I rescued her, spoiler alert. This is going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert. I'm pretty sure you're not going to mind too much. <laughs> Nope. Once once you do rescue Peach, though, she packs off and nicks off on her own. She's like, that's it. I've had enough. So she nicks off to another castle. <laughs> hey, yeah. thanks for it. You know, I'll uh, see you next time. She does come across as a little bit, uh, what's the word I want? Unappreciative of your efforts. Mm. I've, I've got to say that. I kind of felt like telling her to... to on your bike, uh, I 
wasn't happy with her reaction when I went through all of that trouble to rescue her. I mean, I, I don't even think you got a kiss. Not even a cake. Oh. It was nothing. But anyway, Super Mario Odyssey is uh, is a dead set 10 out of 10 for me. That was a brilliant game. And just finishing the game, there's still... I reckon I've done about 15% of the game. Maybe 20%. Because there's still plenty to do. My God, that yeah. is a massive game. How they smashed that all into a Nintendo Switch, I don't know. But they've done an amazing job. Now that you've finished the campaign, yeah, can you go back and replay certain levels? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if I come over and I can play, was it Donk City? Yeah, you can go wherever you want now. Everything's unlocked. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and there's even a little extra level at the end, which I won't mention because I don't want to spoil it for other people listening. There is a, a really cool thing that unlocks at the end, which I want to do a little bit more exploring on because I reckon there's going to be some cool stuff. Put it this way, there's a bit of an homage there. And we'll leave it at that. Hmm, We'll leave it at that. (laughs) But yes, very good. 10 out of 10 from me. All right, uh, next up on my list, I've got Call of Duty World War II. Now, first up, don't be a fool like me. Don't buy a AAA game two days before a massive sale kicks off. Did it, did it come down, did it? Well, look, in saying that, the, the I don't think the standard <laughs> the standard edition didn't come down in price, but the deluxe one did. But, right. uh, yeah, so I bought Call of Duty World War II about two days ago on the Xbox One X. And, uh, yeah, the bloody, what do you call it? The Black Friday Black, sales. Black, Black Friday sales have kicked off now. But, so just be careful with that. Uh, But yeah, and uh, I've got to say, campaign's pretty cool, man. I've I've not finished it. I've played the first two and a half levels, Mm -hmm. and wow, mate! That like it's very graphic. Earns its R eighteen plus rating, uh, and the graphics are amazing. That they've gone beyond any of the graphics we've seen in past games. The photorealism of the characters looks great. Josh Demal is in it. He's in the campaign, and there's a there's a couple of you know Josh Demal, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in Transformers and stuff. Uh, there's a few other familiar faces that you'll see. You probably recognise them, but don't know who they are. Well, that was my case anyway. Looks amazing. The gameplay is also great. They've they've mixed up a couple of things. Uh, they've taken away the auto health regen. So going a little bit old school, you actually have to go up to your medic and take med supplies off them to heal yourself. So you get med kits. And uh, if you run out, you've got to wait for them to regen, so to speak, the med kits. Uh, Same with ammunition. You can pick up ammo from the field and from crates and all that. But you've also got, uh, what would you call the guy that has the ammo? I don't know. A guy with the ammo? Mm. The arm, armorer? An armorer? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you, you go and pick up yeah. ammo from one of your one of your teammates as well, and, and you have to find them too. Like, they're, they're on the battlefield doing their thing, and you have to find them to go and get stuff off. And sometimes you've got to do a bit of a, uh, a run from cover to get to them, which can be a bit scary. Uh, I'm playing it on normal, whatever that's called. Regular, I think it's called. And that's hard! Wow, I died quite a few times. <laughs> and uh, I, I re- like I refused to turn the difficulty down, so I just tried different approaches to the to the problem I was having with dying so often, and I eventually mm. found a workaround and got around it there. But uh, so far, I've you know played as a as the infantry, as the uh, the guy on the ground, boots on the ground with the guns. I've, I've jumped on a what are they called a sir. Uh, uh, no, not a Sam. Like an, a machine gun to shoot down airplanes, whatever they're called. AA yeah. gun. AA gun. Any aircraft um, gun. Uh, I have also uh, driven in a Jeep and had a bit of a, a race uh, to get to a, a location as well. And playing on on the X, man, beautiful. Looks good, but... I found I've I've found an issue already. 
And I think the issue is, I don't know if it's optimization, but my assumption, my educated guess, is that the the bottleneck of the CPU in the X is is rearing its head a little bit here. Because while Mm -hmm. the game plays buttery smooth and is great, every now and then there's a very slight pause where the game freezes for like a microsecond. And I've had that same experience when I've played on my PC and I've got a dated CPU, but I've got a beastly graphics card in my PC. And I'm seeing the same issues on the X as I am with my PC. So I reckon that's the CPU because the CPU is not extremely powerful on the X, but the GPU is. I might be wrong. I don't know, but that's my guess. Still runs a shell of a lot better. (laughs) <laughs> on the Xbox One X than it would on my PC anyway. So talk me through what, what you've done so far in the story. Uh, I have... Sell, sell it to me. Like, so what's the, what, what's the setting? You know, do you, do you get that, that instant bond with who you're playing as or who you are, who, who's around you? So yeah, are you, you sort of in there wanting to push forward and, yeah, and yeah. Go. Look, I haven't played a lot of it as yet, but uh, mm-hmm. it's set in World War Two, which is very obvious from the name. And the ver- first mission is called D Day, and yep. you know the the boats go up. It's the typical Saving Private Ryan. The uh, the the those uh, armored boats go up to the shore. They drop storm the, the ramp. Yeah. They storm the beach. Yep, yeah, and it is an absolute massacre. And it's it's very graphic, just like uh, you would see in uh, Saving Private Ryan is a good depiction of what you'll what to expect here. And it's really hard. You've got to take cover behind those, um, I don't know what they are. I think they're there for the boats or something, those big sort of metal things. Mm-hmm. Anyway. The barricades, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's actually really hard to play. And the characters in there, you've got, you know, like the... The the main guy, well, there's Josh Dumal, who I think is like your squad leader, and uh, and then there's like another guy I think who is in charge of, I don't know, a few groups or whatever, and he he kind of plays this uh, this father figure who, one of your other character friends is always trying to live up to and impress, mm-hmm. and yeah, I I think the characters are real enough that and and they sustain injuries which obviously don't heal, they're part of the story, where you, you feel for feel for them and you you feel that, oh, I don't want to lose this guy, he's good, you know? So, yeah, the, the characters are good. It's, it's going well, and it's only early days for me. Like I said, I've only done the first two and a half missions, um, but I, I'm really enjoying it so far. It looks great, plays great, and the story, I think, is, is going to be powerful. Still plenty for me to see, I guess. Well, I mean, actually, with Call of Duty, I'm probably a third of the way through. <laughs> They're usually fairly short. Uh, I have also done a fair bit of multiplayer with uh, Stick, um, mm-hmm. playing that the last couple of nights. Uh, I'm not terribly great. I had one fantastic round where I um, I was top of the leaderboard and we won the, won the match, uh, but most of the other games weren't so fantastic. But uh, the multiplayer seemed fairly stable for me. A lot of people still complaining about it, saying it's broken. I've not really encountered any brokenness myself, which is good news. How did you find the the hitboxes? That's been a big problem, and something when when I played with Toby the other week, uh, something I saw firsthand uh, was a was a big problem with hit detection. Oh, you had it's anything no, it's no like rare to, with that? It's no different to Call of Duty of the past. They're all like that. Fair enough. And, and and it's I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that Call of Duty is quite fast paced. So mm. with the servers trying to keep up with where you are, you're gonna get lag. And I don't even know if it's possible to get rid of that if you're not on a direct connection like a LAN. Yeah, it's I, called I, a LAN. <laughs> yeah, so I I don't think you can. Like some games, it, you feel like you know, like if you play Siege, it's a lot better. But see, you're mm-hmm. not moving around at 100 miles an hour, you know? It's a lot slower-paced game. So I think the servers can appear to be doing a lot better when in actual fact it's just doing less, so it's easier for it. 
I don't know. That's just my layman's sort of opinion, but I don't, I don't mind it. It is what it is. You know, like there there are probably a million times where I get kills that I probably shouldn't have gotten. So getting angry about a kill that you missed because of you know you or you you got killed and the bullets shouldn't have hit you like you watch the kill cam and they the cursor wasn't even on you how many times have you done that to somebody else without even ever knowing Not what, goes around, what goes around what goes around comes around i guess so if it's happening to them it's happening to you it's happening to everybody that's a fair playing ground and it's i haven't noticed it being overly bad not more than what I've experienced in previous games. So I, cool. I can't complain about it. None of my matches dropped. I never had any host migration. Nothing like that. Um, there's zombies as well. Ving Rames is in, in the zombies mode, and he looks he looks exactly like Ving Rames, which is cool. Well, it does um, like a zombie. <laughs> what's that? He's looking like a zombie, is he? No, 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 he's he's not a zombie. He's one of the characters Isn't in he there. the last... In the last George A. Romero zombie movie, whatever that one was. Yes, he was. He was in the. Or yeah, the one where they're in the uh, the supermarket on the roof. Yeah. Yes, I believe yeah. he was in that. Um, but uh, the zombies mode's good. It's hard. We, the stick and I, I think, managed to get to round thirteen. Was our best. Um, it's it's zombies is is one of those game modes though that you're gonna have to spend a fair bit of time learning it because. You'll struggle the first couple of times because you're not taking advantage of the advantages that you have at your disposal. So <clears throat> unless you've got somebody that's a, an absolute nutter like Repremier who can show you the ropes immediately because for some reason, the, you know, the game's been out for 48 hours and he's played it for 94 hours because it's like weird like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you, you've got to take your time and learn it. And I, I think I might put a little bit of time into this and see see if I can enjoy it because it was pretty cool. So if we can get a, a few people together, we might uh, look into playing that a bit more because it, it, it seems seems like a pretty decent game mode. Cool. Uh, what else? What else? So there was yeah multiplayer and zombies. Oh, and there's that new little weird hub world. You know, you know that sort of oh, yeah, that division divisiness. style hub world. Yeah. Hub world. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind that. It loads real quick too, because when you uh, when you get a um, like a loot loot crate box, if you win, I think apparently it picks a couple of people at random after every game and gives them a loot ba- loot box. You press the right trigger to open it, but like instantaneously, it takes you from the you know the multiplayer screen when you're waiting for the next game and you see you see everyone standing there and you're basically just waiting for the timer to go down. If you press mm-hmm. that right trigger, it immediately throws you into that hub world. There's no loading. You just, just boom, you're there. And then you can open your loot boxes there and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Crazy how quickly it loads. I, I really don't get how they've done that. But um, Yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking it. Really liking it. Got plenty more to do in the story, though. Do you have any, any questions about COD? Uh, no. No. I have to come have to come around and give it a crack. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got it digitally, so if you do come around and give it a crack, we can play together on uh, separate consoles. Because hmm. I've got Sweet. a thousand Xboxes. Yeah. Uh, we live streamed Destiny Two. We talked about that. We you did. talked me into that by saying you want to play, and I went, "Yep, yep, <laughs> that was all right." Uh, and we met Aussie Gamer. Come and watch the watch the stream. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Found my doppelganger. Although he's not very express, though. Uh, no, I played a bit more chilled. Y- yeah, I played more <laughs> South Park Phone Destroyer. Have you played that much? Yeah, not not a whole lot, only because um, because I use my phone for work. I kind of hate looking at it, but uh, I have I have played it a little bit, you know, on lunch do, and do, whatnot. Do you see what I mean? That it's very Clash Royale. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah, and I enjoy Clash Royale, and uh, yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. I think now that now with this this phone game, I think is explaining to me a little bit why I don't like Stick of Truth and Fractured But Whole. I don't like the gameplay. I, I really yeah. don't like. I'm I'm not a. That's probably my least favorite type of gameplay is turn based. Hmm. 
unless it's Pokemon, I don't like turn-based combat at all. And I think that's that's probably my major major gripe, and that's probably bleeds off into why I, I despise the humor. Really, it's my dis dislike or distaste for the combat, and it sort of biasedly makes me dislike the actual humor. But playing Phone Destroyer, I actually like it. But now that I'm talking about it, I want to go and play it again. But anyway, uh, last on my list here is uh, Black Friday sales. I p I've already picked up two games. <laughs> three games. <laughs> Sorry, three games. Three. Yeah, I, I bought um, Rocket League on the Xbox One, so I can play that with more people. I mm -hmm. bought Sports Bar VR. Did you get that yet? No, no, no. I'll be. It'll pick it up tonight. Don't worry. Awesome. Uh, and I picked up State of Decay on the Xbox as well because that's like seven bucks. Oh, it's on. It's on Game Pass at the moment. Yeah, but I don't have Game Pass. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm and, getting mine shortly as well. And I thought, yeah, I should, I should just get it on Game Pass, but I don't know when I'm actually going to get around to playing it. And once, yeah, so once, seven once, bucks. Wow. yeah, once we get really close to State of Decay two, I'm probably going to do some live streams of State of Decay just as the lead up. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought, bugger it, it's seven dollars. I'm just going to buy it. Then I don't have to worry about wasting money on Game Pass when I'm not actually using it. Blah blah blah. So I just bought it. Seven bucks, done. So. Uh, also, I'll, I'll just a quick mention. I entered a competition, a competition last week um, to win an Assassin's Creed Origins oh. pack through Blue Mouth Interactive. Yep. And then out of the blue, I get a, a message through my Facebook account saying, Hi, Lucas. What's your address? You're the winner of the Assassin's Creed pack. And I'm like, the winner of what? And I went and had a look at it. And I'm like, Oh, that's that massive pack that I entered the competition? No. So I replied back saying, are you serious? And he wrote back saying, 100% serious. So give us your address and we'll send it out to you. Oh my God, do you realize that's like $1,600 worth of stuff? There's an Xbox yeah. One S in there. There's a, there's a scuff controller. There's a set of Lucid Sound wireless headphones. By the looks of it, I guess they're the wireless ones. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, Assassin's Creed Origins there's an art book for Origins there's a t-shirt for Origins there's also this uh, laptop portable gaming set which you put your Xbox into and you can carry it wherever and it's got a screen on it and everything so you can play r like wherever you are did I miss anything? I think that's everything in there I think that's it yeah that's a lot of stuff You'll be sure oh, there'll yeah. be some unboxings when I get all that gear. <laughs> It'd be like Christmas. Oh, mm -hmm. it is, it, but it's not Christmas yet. Still November. Oh, all right. I don't care. It'll be like Christmas. I'll even wear a Santa hat if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So look, look, my advice to anyone, go and like a few pages on Facebook and follow some people on Twitter. When there's these giveaways, like you've got to enter. Mind you, there was only like, there was less than 400 entries in this competition. I mean, although... Yeah, but I, I had two in there. Oh, did you the missus as well? <laughs> no, because I've got my my account and my Snoog's account. Oh, you cheat. I only had the one. So. But but the thing is, you've got to be in it to win it. And with this one, like, in my books, one out of 350, that's the odds are pretty good. And, and also, yeah. the odds are going to be, like, a little bit skewed because they pick based on your response because they pick the one they like mm. yeah so you, you know put some thought into your answers some of them are just pure chance but you've got to be in it to win it man oh look you won the playstation vr a few weeks ago yeah yeah and um and i i entered two two competitions today on, on one on facebook and one on twitter you got to do it. You got to be in it to win it. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. You're just going to be sour. But essentially, you won uh, PlayStation VR and my competitive nature snoogs. I just had to one up you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll get in. Oh, what's that? You got five hundred and fifty dollars worth of prizes. Well, <laughs> hold my beer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is essentially made my day when that when I found out about that. I'm. I'm really humbled that's that's amazing 
great. Well, you price. called me. You called me from work, and that's something you never do. So. I did. I I called you straight yeah. away. I was like, dude. <laughs> I called you before uh-huh. anybody. Didn't even call my wife. Ah, uh, brilliant. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, my daughter, I told my daughter about it, and she goes, what do you need another Xbox for? I said, I don't need, I don't need any of this, but I no. want it. <laughs> this you one's should, going to stay in the mobile gone, pack. Well, it was going in your room until that response. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ha, ha. Uh, but I think that's it. Look, there's probably more that I'm missing, uh, but whatever. It's been a pretty cool week. There's some good good stuff there that we've discussed. I reckon maybe we can now move on to video game news. News. Alrighty, first up in this week's news, it's an interesting one. And I think I stole the little mm. p- picture that you put up on the Facebook page about this. But EA, and I'm elaborating a little bit on it. EA is in hot water with Disney. A little bit of creative license with that title as well. But let me read here. There is uh, the announcement that came from Oscar Gabrielson, the general manager at DICE. He uh, released this, he had to say. As we approach the worldwide launch, it's clear that many of you feel that there are still changes in the that there are still challenges, read Lucas, that there are still challenges in the design. We've heard the concerns about potentially giving players unfair advantages, and we've heard that this is overshadowing an otherwise great game. This was never our intention, I'd like to think not. Sorry, we didn't get this right. We hear you loud and clear, so we're turning off all in-game purchases. We will now spend more time listening, adjusting, balancing, and tuning. This means that the option to purchase crystals in the game is now offline, and all progression will be earned through gameplay. The ability to purchase crystals in-game will become available at a later date, and only after we've made changes to the game. We'll share more details as we work through this. Oscar Gabrielson, General Manager of DICE. Now, obviously there's been issues with people being able to pay real money to get their characters quicker and it's an advantage over other people that are playing the game and can't spend or don't want to spend rightly so more than their hundred dollar purchase for the game so they're removing the uh the microtransaction so you ca- you can only do it through gameplay now. No, no 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 they're turning them off for now what do i say Oh, removing. I'm removing, removing, sorry. Well, yeah, yeah, temporarily it's, removing. The it's switch it's a very grey area. There's There's been a lot of talk. So it's, it's a, uh, there's, there's a lot of talk going around, especially on uh, Reddit and, and Twitter, that um, because obviously, you know, the, the gamers of the world have, have had their voice and they've used it, but they've actually used their wallet to a, a much higher um success rate really so apparently the sales of battlefront 2 are down 60 percent on the first one yeah ouch. after all this problem so that's that's a big ouch and uh ea stocks are actually starting to drop yep so i did hear that the share now, prices yeah we were having a chat with hell's ghetto a good friend of aussie gamers express just the other day and he mm-hmm. pointed out something that uh I didn't really, it didn't really occur to me, but it makes a lot of sense. This isn't really a very good fix because essentially those that have already paid for to to speed up their progress and get the better characters and gear, well, they're not obviously not going to take that away from them because they've already spent the money. You can't really take their stuff away. No. But now that the the microtransactions transactions have been turned off. They still have an advantage because nobody else can actually, if they wanted to, go and buy the gear to catch up with them. So no, apparently they've still an issue. They've balanced the amount of time that takes as well. Well, they haven't balanced it to what the internet calls an success, success acceptable level. Sorry, I'm just dribbling over here. Um, but yeah, so whereas before it would take. 
um, 40 hours to, to get enough coin to, to unlock one certain character, and now only takes eight hours to unlock that character. And yeah, that, so that's a bit more reasonable. That, they've tried but that balancing out. In saying that as well, that, that does devalue what people have just bought, though. Oh, yeah. If you've just paid money for it, you're spitting right now. Yeah. Yeah, you'd, absolutely. You'd be screaming for your money back. Because that that's the same as if you go and buy a brand new car for $20,000 and then tomorrow mm-hmm. they put it on sale for eight. Yeah. Well, you, I just spent 20 grand on that. Although a different scale, same sort of thing. It, it's yeah, it's a bloody mess, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, wouldn't, it's a, I wouldn't it's want to be there right mess. now. But first, first and foremost, I've heard nothing about the campaign yet. No, neither have I. Nobody's really talking about I'm, that. I'm a I'm a massive Star Wars fan, and this campaign was designed to tie in between um, episode six and seven. Mm. So it was it was designed to be uh, uh, another story from the the Star Wars world. And from the eyes of the uh, the Empire, right? But I've not I've not heard anything about it, mm. and I really want to. Yeah, but, but if I do again, get it, it, it'll be for the for the campaign. Yeah, and and the other thing that I want to point out that I think's a bit unfair, a lot of stuff um, that I that I seen that I I see popping up about it is all dice. Dice seems to be taking the heat for this. <laughs> yeah, because they made it. But, yeah, that's probably not their call on how they how they had to put it together. But that, yeah, yeah, but saying it, that... It should, be, it, should, it should be a complete thing because from what I'm understanding is that Dice made it and they made this certain thing and then it went to EA and EA have done what EA do. Yeah, see... Like you, just, you just have to look at their, their heard, other big release. I've heard all those... They're getting those... over that as well. But I've heard those news articles that have said that EA made the changes to the DICE formula and EA did their thing, blah, blah, blah. But I've also heard rumours saying that EA and DICE both wanted to have cosmetic-only microtransactions. It was actually Lucasfilm, Disney, that Mm. wanted the pay-to-win style loot in there. I I think it's become, because it has become such a big issue, it's, it's become too muddy now. Oh, and it's we, just everybody's blaming everybody. Yeah, and and we don't know what's true, what's bait, what's people just looking for a click. You know, it's. Uh, I'd I'd love to know the full official story, but I think there's just there's too many people talk telling it now. Yeah, I think I think it'll know. Yeah, I think it'll be a while if if ever before we find mm. out exactly what's going down. Uh, but I've also heard that. Disney knew nothing of this uh, pay to win and are actually like ramming EA saying fix this and fix it now because we have uh, the next Star Wars movie coming out next month. I don't want any negative press surrounding that because if we lose profits on the movie, we're taking Star Wars off you, Mr. and Mrs. EA. But I don't even know mm. if that's true. It's just so, like you said, it's muddy, it's messy. I don't know, but it's interesting. It's good to watch a train wreck. Yeah, just sort of kick back and oh yeah, here comes it. Oh yeah. But anyway, mm. Mm. if we end up either either myself or yourself uh, pick up a copy, I personally and I, I reckon I'd, I'd be enough to be able to say this on your behalf as well. Any of that side of it, I'm not getting into. No, I don't care either. It'll just be a. It'll just be a. If if I get my hands on it over the next few weeks, I'll I'll bring you details of the story yeah, because that's, that's what we need to know. That, that's what I think we need to focus on. At the moment. That's all I care about. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm a bit. Of... Moving on from Star Wars, next in the news: ten years of Uncharted. So it's been ten years since Uncharted was drake's fortune was released that's a long time oh yeah 1999 no 1997 2007 2007 that that makes more sense yeah uh where it came out so that's that's pretty that's a long time and what do we got Mm. four five games from it is that right 
Yeah, plus the wasn't there a spin off on was it Golden Abyss or Yeah, Golden Abyss on the Vita. Oh, on the Vita. And then a couple of um DLCs there as well. But yeah, look yeah. it's it, it's a massive franchise. If if somebody out there owns a PlayStation, where it be a PS three or a PS four, and you haven't played an uncharted game, man. They're on special at the moment with the um Black Friday sales. Under fifteen dollars each, so they're probably like fourteen ninety five. So you can get uh, the remasters really cheap for the PS four. But the anyway, re- remasters actually work really well. Yes, they are. They're really good. Mm. Uh, Sony has given out a bunch of free stuff for the uh, the anniversary. Some of which we won't get or haven't got yet. But bear with me. There's a free PS four theme and profile avatar, uh, which is uh, downloadable over the next two days. Which is currently now at the time of recording but i went and checked it on the australian store today and literally lost my mind trying to find it and then i thought oh it's probably not on the aussie store why not it's been longer than 10 years it's been around for longer in australia than it has in the states because of the time zone still (laughs) still it's it it hit the 10 year mark here first well not first because New Zealand, I think, is ahead of us by about an hour or so. But three, um, three is it? Yep. Two or three, depending on Tommy. Sorry. Didn't, didn't want to upset you there. Oh. Uh, what else have I got here? There is uh, an Uncharted 10th Anniversary Character Skin Bundle for Uncharted 4's multiplayer mode, which is available for free now until December 19. Hopefully that's available in Australia. The pack includes classic skins for Nate, Sully, and Elena. And Uncharted 4 points and relics will be half priced during this period as well. Sony will also be hosting a retrospective panel from the PlayStation Experience event on December 10. And it'll take place in a life-size recreation of Nate's Attic from Uncharted 4. How cool does that sound? That sounds awesome. I want to go. I wonder if they're going to have the uh, the gun game set up. They will. They will with a little nerf. And the, Surely. The, yeah, they will. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that that's something to look forward to. December 10th for, on the PlayStation Experience. That'll be um, on there. But anyway, that's all. Let us know if you've got it on the Aussie store. Comment on the pin post and let everyone know. What's, what's your favourite one? Favourite Uncharted? Mm-hmm. Two. Two? Yeah, Among Thieves. What's yours? Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably two as well. Have you finished Close any of them? I'm suspect on you. No, I have finished them all. Uh, um. Yeah, pro- probably two or or I enjoy. I really enjoyed three actually as well. Yeah. No, I look. I, it was, um, just a I little think bit different because that was the first time you actually played as young Nate. Yeah, not such a highlight for me. But um, I think with two. I think two blew me away because it was such a jump from one. Mm. From two to three, it, while the graphics did get better, it, it wasn't as big yeah. of a jump. But uh, in, was it the, the second one where it was the, the first time that you encountered the, ooh, when he went in the water? Ooh, what? When he walks into the water, he gets to a certain depth and goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. You don't remember that? Oh, for the the groin section. Yes, it gets a bit oh. of a cold nah. buzz. That wasn't in two, was it? I think it was two. Mm, I don't know, but mind you, the the pants, the wedding of the pants going in the water. That they that was in the first one. That, that was, was in the first one. I can, I can was... remember just running into any bit of water that I could find just to see it. Yeah, that was advanced for its time. Yeah. That that blew me away. The the. Horrible six axis six axis control when you walked over the logs. Oh um, yeah, I'm glad they got rid of that for the remaster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, go and get the remasters if you haven't played them. You really should. They're great games, real action oriented, fantastic, lot of killing. All right, uh, moving on. The last bit of news here: Time Magazine's Gadget of the Year. Can you guess what it is? It's going to be video game related, of course, considering mm-hmm. it's on this podcast. Gadget of the year for a Time magazine that's video game related. Mmm. Mmm. 
Come the pass on. the butter robot. Come on. The what? Pass the butter. <laughs> what is my purpose? You pass the butter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. All right. Uh, if you can't guess, in Time's top 10 list of gadgets released in 2017, the Nintendo Switch has taken the number one spot. Wow. Yeah. So uh, the list has been a fixture of Time's end of the year roundups, looking back and compiling the top people and things from the year. This year, the Switch topped the list with iPhone 10. Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S8 and the Xbox One X all below it on the list. Hmm. Big year that's, for Nintendo. Nice. That's pretty impressive. And I've got a little bit of a mm. quote here from the author of that list. For about as long as game consoles have existed, players have had to choose between gaming in front of a TV or holding a tiny screen in their hands while out and about. Not so with the Nintendo Switch, the first console that's truly designed for both at home and on the game on-the-go entertainment. I agree with that. It works brilliantly in both forms. So, there you go. Time Magazine. Gadget of the Year 2017 Nintendo Switch. Go! You go, Nintendo! They, they, Nintendo are very up and down, aren't they? They are. When they're on, they're really on. But when they're off, you would never know who they are. Yeah. I mean, look, of in course. saying that, their, their failed consoles are still good. I love the Wii U. It's just mm-hmm. uh, in a global scale they were failures, so to speak. Oh, I still I still love the Wii. If we've ever got a, uh, but that a was family, one of their, that was one of their success stories. Yeah, well, if we've ever got a um, a family sort of get together over at Mum's place, she's still got it sitting under the TV over there. So I set it up and and get playing and always have a laugh. It's good fun. Yeah, look, I, I never owned one as a, like a home console, but I do mm-hmm. have one now. I picked it up as a as a collectible thing that uh, from one of Rachel, my wife's friends, was getting well moving and getting rid of it and just said, here, do you want this? And I said, uh, yes, I do, because it's a Nintendo Wii with controllers, a couple of games, all still in its original box and packaging. Yes. And now in the cupboard. I will take that. Yes. And now it's in the cupboard, yeah. Being, yeah. being uh, preserved. And uh, one day we'll be in a display cabinet. I will do. I promise I will do that for myself one day. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of the news. So that uh, that puts us in line for user created content. All right, Snoogs. This week's user created content was spurred on by the fact that we're doing a game of the year episode in a few weeks' time. So I thought we'd bring this up now and get the juices flowing, get the ideas there so we can put together our personal lists mm-hmm. ready for that show, which is in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, the uh, user created content t- uh, topic was what's your pick for game of the year? And uh, we got a fantastic showing for for their answers. People wanted to get their answers out there. So let's go through them. We'll comment along the way. So George Snyder is the first comment on the top there saying Zelda. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to assume that he's talking about Breath of the Wild. I'm pretty sure that's the only oh, Zelda that was uh, released this year. Pretty good assumption, I'd say. Yeah. I've not played it. I'm not a massive Zelda fan. I will play it, uh, and I, I look. I love the Zelda lore. Just never been able to get into them. But anyway, George Snyder is. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be alone on this list. Next one down, James Cotton says Horizon Zero Dawn. There really was way too many exceptional games released this year. It was a lot, but Horizon Zero Dawn's a pretty safe bet. That one, I think, is going to be up there. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you're not going to argue with me. No, not for that one, no. Or James. <laughs> uh, Jaden Anthony Buster Harding, if he didn't have enough names. Good on you, man. From what I've seen and heard, Mario Odyssey and Zelda are both very worthy game of the year. Would be good to see Nintendo get one after so long. Last Goaty was Ocarina of Time, was it not? Well, look at... I mean, I guess it depends on where you're getting your game of the year from, because there's heaps of different outlets that that do game of the year but uh i i honestly can't remember what the last nintendo game of the year was he's probably right 
the yeah. I dare say if if it was going to be any of them, it would have been Ocarina. Yeah, well, Zelda's got a good chance at it, but it is a mm. game of good years though. Uh, next on the list is Chris Cameron, Knifey Spoony. The only reason why I don't <laughs> think that's going to get anywhere near it is that is not from 2017. Yeah. <laughs> but good, good try anyway. Appreciate the comment. Good on you, Chris. <laughs> James Mackey says Horizon Zero Dawn and Resident Evil 7. Sounds like this man knows what he's talking about. Resident mm-hmm. Evil 7. Ooh. Do you reckon that'll get up there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends, it depends on where, where, you, where you're looking at your game of the year from, but I reckon an Aussie Gamers Express one, it's going to be somewhere there. It's going to be somewhere there, yeah. No spoilers, though. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks, James. Uh, Paul David Clement, G- Ghost Recon Wildlands for fun and Cuphead for visuals. Paul, um, look, I agree with you. A lot of people pick on Ghost Recon Wildlands yeah, and say it's horrible. I don't get that, mate. We had I, so much fun playing that. Yeah, I'm lost with that. I, I thought it was a fantastic game. I platinumed we, it. We had, we had fun in the beta. Like, yeah. an absolute ball with it. I don't understand the hate for it. I really mm. don't. If if it's probably Ghost Recon veterans because it's very different to the previous Ghost Recon games, so they are probably annoyed that they changed the formula so much. But I thought it was a great game. Agree with you, Paul. Should be up there. Mm-hmm. Next one, Zachary Courtney says Assassin's Creed Origins. Now I'm still playing Assassin's Creed Origins here and there a little bit. I'm not getting Game of the Year vibes from it, though. Good game. But I don't. I think they've played it safe. I don't, I don't think they've really done anything. I haven't played a lot of it, mind you. I've only played a little bit. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know. So far, it just feels like Assassin's Creed, which is not bad, but it's not... Whoa! If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew Wolford, he says uh, Breath of the Wild as well so there's another one for that one and uh then his mate says nah the bad graphics got to be destiny i think he's being <laughs> facetious there uh and then uh, matthew replies to him saying oh yeah that's right graphics over gameplay how silly of me yeah i think that's a couple of mates having a bit of banter there thanks yeah. for that matthew and good on you peter dan debosh maybe deboz I don't know. I hope that that's close enough. He says, Divinity Original Sin 2. I played the original one. That's uh, that's one of those turn-based combat games. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot more sense. See, I've, I've heard um, a few people, and probably biggest name would be Bajo. Mm. He's, uh, he's been talking about playing it over the last sort of week. So... Yeah, I've not seen anything of it. I never played the original. It's just never come on my radar. But um, yeah, a few people seem to like it. Yeah, they're great games. For for people that like those games, it, it is probably the best. It is best, the best out there. Uh, Mark J. Travis says Zelda or AC Origins. So Zelda's sounding pretty popular. And mm. his friend Alec Gorsi says uh, Troll Hunters. And then Mark says, or maybe... Oh, excuse me, a bit of a burp there. Or maybe Troll and I. And uh, I think that's what he meant. And then Alex uh, Alec says, that's the game I was thinking about. My trolling has failed. How funny is that? He tried to suggest another game that was actually bad to troll with the game Troll and I and failed. <laughs> failed that big time. Troll and I was so bad. That's going to make a list for sure, but not the game of the year <laughs> list. All right. Uh, thanks, Mark and uh, Alec. Mitchell Stuchbury. Stuchbury. Horizon Zero Dawn. There's another one for that one. That is a good game. We are pretty much going to be agreeing with you uh, for the most part, Mitch. And then there's another Mitch. Mitchy Sims. Gwent Open Beta. <laughs> Are we allowed to have open betas and uh, early access oh, games? That's that's going to stay in early access for a while. And yeah, I had 
I had a lot of fun very early on, um, predominantly when it was only on the Xbox. Mm. And yeah, it's it's a good fun game, and it's actually evolved pretty well. So it's um, yeah, good, slowly good turning game. into yeah, but, slowly turning into something that's that's quite addictive. But I just don't have the time to put into it. But that that brings up my question again, though. Are we allowed to, like, I mean, our listeners and that can have whatever they want. That's fine. But for us, when we do our list, are we allowed to include betas and early access games? What's your no. thoughts? No, no. Is that your thought? That's my thought. Yeah. That's my thought as well. Oh, yeah. I guess we're on agreeance then. No. Cool. No. PUBG, you're out. Not that it would have made my <laughs> list anyway. Uh, then, uh, is this... Is this you? Yeah, it is. It says Aussie Games no, you've Express. Missed, you've missed Matthew. Oh, I've missed a couple. Matthew and John Lockyer. Oh, my bad. Ma- Matthew Bush- Bushel, uh, mm-hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn, and Assassin's Creed Origins. Another couple of votes there. Or- people are loving Origins. That's good. I must be a bit of a naysayer. John Lockyer, good on you, man. Thanks for that one. Horizon Zero Dawn, another one for that one. HZD, very popular. Now we get to your one. I don't know how I missed them. Uh, you didn't sign off, but uh, yeah. this 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 was uh, this is your. I can see who who it was. Yeah. Does Final Fantasy fit into this year? Was end of November last year that it was released? Are you like taking crazy pills? What? Of course, it doesn't count. No, but look with the the main game of the year, like that they've just released their um. Uh, they've just released their list, you know, of who's who's your who's in the running for for game of the year, who's in the running for most anticipated, blah 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 blah. Yeah, they go from like the tenth of November till the tenth of November. Do they? Who's they? Yeah, whoever does these lists, you know, that Hideo's on the panel. Okay, that's a, two, that's a 2016 game. That's how they do it. That's why. Well, I it's like a financial question. year thing, is it? I, I, I don't know. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, but I'm going to say no because I don't like Final Fantasy. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> there was Turn there was some inputs combat. like um, turn-based you know, combat. Last um, like last year, it wasn't included in last year's ones because it was released after the cutoff date. Oh, okay. Well, if that's mm. if that's true, like then yeah, I guess it does. I guess it does fit in there. You you can have it if you want it in there, Snooks. I don't want to bust your balls. <laughs> All right, uh, Kyle Williams is next. He says, Fortnite Battle Royale, free, fun, and easy to play. Uh, I agree with that. I'd like to use it, but it doesn't fit in because it's early access, isn't it? Mm. Would the Battle Royale side be classified as early access? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think we're allowed to use that one. But a uh, very good choice. And like I said, anybody listening, you guys can you can have whatever you like. That's your freedom. Jordan Wood was next, and he said, the only new game I've played this year was Assassin's Creed Origins because that's the only one that interested me. Aside from Horizon, Zelda, and Mario, there wasn't particularly anything eye-catching this year. That like That's a strange comment, that one, because it's kind of like saying... I don't like anything except for that, 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 and that. <laughs> kind of uh, like contradicted himself towards the end there, you know? It's the only thing yeah, I, that interested they, me this year except it, for all these other awesome of, games. He kind of did have a bit of a point as well. There was I see his point. I see yeah, his yeah, point, there, but I'm there just wasn't being a, a consistent, you know, um, consistent release of AAA titles throughout the year. There wasn't? Are you saying there wasn't? No, not like we've had in previous years. Have you living they, they on, are you living in an alternate universe no, no, with that no, with no, that no, weird no, Superman no, that's no, bad? No. Shut your gob for a sec. No. There there was a there was a con- consistent release for us because we see them all and we're reporting on them all. And yeah, but everybody we're, else can we're, see we're them. A, we're, we're seeing a, a full range of them. You know, you, you've got You've got that many different genres to pick from, so we're seeing, you know, this this great big wide arc of available games. But 
when you break it down to previous years where you've had, you know, a certain style of game come out at certain times during the year, like um, for for years there was, uh, what was it, May or June, you'd have like uh, one year we had Fallout, the the other another year we've had The Witcher Three, you know we haven't had anything like that this year. But oh my god, I've seen plenty, but we haven't seen. You've been taking crazy one. pills. You, that's it. No, I can, I can see what he's. I can see where he's coming from. I'm going to be doing a litmus test on you next week to make sure you're not using illicit drugs while still in a podcast with me. Do you understand? Is that fair? Yes, I agree. Agree. Agree with me now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, fine. That's a side point (laughs) because they're not illicit. Yeah. What's that? They're they're not illicit. Oh, the ones you're on. (laughs) (laughs) Pharmaceutical. No, like I'm just I'm just trying to say that I I can understand where he's coming from because there did seem to be a little bit of a for those. We we saw them because we we see you know most of them and we've we've both got a very wide arc when it comes to what we like to play, whereas some people who only like those those very particular types of games, mm. like you know Assassin's Creed or or Horizon, where they're they're different but they're also a similar style. There All wasn't right. a full well, run of them. I'll agree. So we can move on. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ari, Ari, oh gee, come on, guys. Ari Kahalami. 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 You, what is it? Kahalami. Kahalami. Not really that hard, is it? <laughs> no. I'm an idiot. All right, Yakuza 0. Easy go game of the year for me. Always loved Yakuza series, but 0 just improves on every aspect. Story is amazing, mm. and there are just a lot of of stuff to do, and everything is just so well made. I've never been a fan of the Yakuza games. In saying that, never played one. Have yes. you? No. But um, those who have played them, love them. Mm, I think in the latest Yakuza, you could play Outrun or something, could you? Something like that, yeah. Some, some arcade game. Cheers, uh, mm. Ari. Appreciate that. Uh, next up, we got Brett Hale saying Zero Horizon Dawn. <laughs> And Forza 7. It's a strange name, isn't mm-hmm. it? it? It's it's quite... Um, when did they come up with it? Confusable. Well, confusing. I mean, it's Horizon Zero Dawn, but look, it, it, and I used to make this same mistake, and I'd get it mixed yeah. up. You know how I learnt how to say it properly? Forza. Forza. Forza Horizon Zero Dawn is how I say it in my head. I just omit the fours apart. That's how smart I am. But yeah, so <laughs> uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Forza 7. Cheers, Brett. Uh, you got some good choices there. Uh, and Forza 7 is definitely going to be up there for a racing game. Uh, second and last, we've got Wayne Martin saying Assassin's Creed Origins. Another pick for that one. Good on you, Wayne. Thank you. And uh, Brad Trot with iRacing. I'm not big on iRacing. Did that came out this year, did it? I honestly have no idea. No, me neither. I know what it is, but, but I don't uh, know much about it. Let me do a quick Google. Uh, iRacing. Oh, it's like... Oh, it's been out since... Two... Oh. <laughs> How good's this? Initial release date, 2008. Stable release date, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it was kind of in early access. So yeah, I guess that well, counts. Yeah, because it was, it's released now. Yeah, so that, that explains a lot because it it has like exploded this year amongst the the sim racing community. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, that that works. And it that's looks fair. sick. Well, it's, I'd love to have a crack. Yeah, it is cool. It'd be good to have a good yeah. setup. Uh, that brings us to the end of our entries. That's uh, that is our user created content and our game of the year. We're obviously not going to comment on ours. We'll be talking about it in the last show for this year, which will be episode 199. So uh, what's this episode? 96, isn't it? 196? Mm Mm-hmm. So we've got uh, not so many episodes to go. Better get started on my list. Yeah, we've got to start compiling it. I've already started compiling mine, and there'll be a lot of chopping and changing between now and then. All right, uh, let's move on to the next segment, which is What's That Sound? Uh, 
uh, Snooks, uh, for what's that sound last week? Do you, do you recall what it was? I do. Did you get it? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, no, I missed out. Much oh. to yours and my disgust, really. No, I wasn't disgusted. It was it was tricky. No. I, I wasn't angry. I was just disappointed. <laughs> Music is a tricky one to do, but this was last week's <laughs> What's That Sound? Now you weren't you weren't alone. Nobody else sent in any answers. I don't recall. Uh, no, I don't think anybody else had a guess. So either they didn't know either, or nobody's listening to the show long enough to get to the what's that sound segment. <laughs> A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, maybe. But anyway, that was the intro from South Park, Fractured But Whole. So that was why you were disappointed, because uh, you're obviously a big fan of that game. But anyway, them's the breaks. You want to hear this week's What's That Sound? Yes, please. All right, I know what it is, so I'm not playing. This one is for you. Groovy! You know that one? Come on, Stiggs. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Do it, again. Do it again. You want it again? Okay. Groovy! Is that d- It is. It is. Hey! Hey, that's, that's all you need to say. I know you know. Well yeah. done! Woo! Yay! All right, I'll play it again for others that want to hear it. But this one's, this is a good one to get. Good on you, Snooks. Groovy! It's a short one, so I'll play Groovy. it again. Groovy! Groovy! And again. Groovy! And that'll do. <laughs> do you play that game much? Oh, lots. All the time? That was a good game. That was that was a pretty cool game back back in the day. That's That's one that could do with a reboot, actually. It could. A proper one, yeah. though. Do, don't ruin it, yeah. whoever does it. Not a half, yeah. ha- yeah, half-hearted a one. one. That's one that um, a fan needs to do it. Yeah, like Sonic Mania. A fan... Yeah. Uh, like, actually, a person that made... Uh, that Sonic Mania actually made a fan Sonic game on his own... And then, like, the people that made Sonic Mania hired him to, to help them with Mania. That's oh, how good he was. So, yeah, those, those fan-made stuff's pretty good sometimes. All right, so that was What's That Sound this week. If you think you know what the sound was, then send us a message to our Facebook page. If you're correct, you'll get yourself a free game. Let's move on to Last Words. <laughs> All right, in last words, Snoogs, uh, I'm also I'm giving away a copy of Gears of War 4. You can go across to YouTube and check out my video, which is titled something about the Xbox follow-up, two weeks with the Xbox One X. Go and check that video out. I'll put a link in the description to the podcast. So check that out. You may be able to work out how to win a copy of Gears of War 4 for the Xbox One. Um, Also, tomorrow, unfortunately, Snoogs, you can't come with me, but I'm heading into the Big Smoke. Hopefully I don't get lost, but I'm going to the PlayStation Play Fest. So that's that's a... um, from, From what I understand, it's a... A house that's been set up with every room. Yep. A certain theme. Yeah. It's it sounds it sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to do um like a vlog style for the day, and um uh, it'll it's probably going to be up on YouTube already if I've had the time to edit it and all that sort of stuff. So Mm. if you're listening to this, go and check it out. uh, PlayStation Play Fest. Um, and it was down in Sydney. There, I'm really looking forward to hopefully playing another level of uh detroit become human and there's going to be some never never before played playstation games and playstation vr games down there but yeah house with different rooms set up with different games that's going to be exciting and awesome 
It's also going to be, I think tomorrow's, I'm not sure if tomorrow's the media day or if it's the public day. I think tomorrow's the public day. But I've managed to snag myself an invite as uh, as part of the media to come and do some coverage for it for all cool. of our listeners. Sweet. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I wish I could come along. I'm disappointed you can't come with me because yeah. it's always more enjoyable when I've got, got my, my, my right-hand man with me. But, you know, th- those things happen and uh, I'll um, try to make some fun of it on my own, meet some people. <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, there was a, there's a rumor coming out. Have you heard of it? Rainbow Six Siege, the zombie mode? Yeah, apparently it was, um, was spoken about in the season three trailer that went live today. Yeah. So we, uh, we've, we've known about the outbreak, outbreak mode, but we didn't, I don't think we linked it to a zombie mode. No, nah, but I haven't, I haven't seen any, any official data on it yet. Mm, um, no, me neither. I've I've not received I any uh, correspondence I from not. Ubisoft. I I really hope not. Oh, you uh, hope not? It's gonna be free. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I, no, I don't want a zombie mode in that. I zombie do. mode takes it. It's siege is not run and gun. You know, it doesn't need. No, that's good. It it doesn't need a it doesn't need a zombie mode. It doesn't need to be. It's um. It just yeah, it doesn't need it doesn't need anything like that. You say that now, it's going to be fantastic. You think so? Yeah, because I, I think it's going to be great. Now, now who's been a naysayer? No, I'm I'm happy to be proven wrong. And I think you will be. I'm positive about this. It's going to be a free addition to the game, and uh, well, rumored. Uh, I guess mm-hmm. there's nothing official, but um, if there is anything official, check out on our website. We should have it up if if we do get official word all, from Ubisoft. All I know, mate, is one more night of on Siege, and I'll have enough for now and there to buy. You cut me out. Would you say one more night on Siege? You'll have enough for now to what? To buy Ella. Ella. Yeah, is that, one of the new operators. Is that uh, like Ella from Killing Heidi? No. no. Not sure many of our audience is going to get who <laughs> Killing Heidi is. Oh, God. Paul Clannett. Fl- Paul Clannett will know. <laughs> that's a flashback and a half, that one. Uh, you say Ella's one of the. It in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ella's one of the. All I think the she's twists a... and bends. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, stop it. It's too late for that. Yeah. I think she's a uh, defender. A new the, a new defender. The chick from Killing Heidi, or are we talking about Rainbow no, Six again? Not, not the chick from Killing Heidi. Back on Rainbow Six. Ah, um, right. Okay. Yeah. Good on you, Ella Hooper, if you're listening. <laughs> mm. She listens to gaming podcasts. Yeah. Oh, she might. She was hot back in the day. She still is. Is she? Oh, I've not seen her in mm. a while. Yeah, I saw her a few months ago. What, just at a family do? Where did you see her? (laughs) She was on something popped up on Facebook. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Hi, Ella. How are you going? How's how's that Heidi friend of yours? I have have met her. I did meet her back in the uh, early noughties. Oh, nice. I remember Mm. I mentioned it to my mum. She was like, oh, who's this band? And I said, oh, that's Killing Heidi. She goes, Killing Heidi? What stupid parents called their daughter Killing Heidi? (laughs) <laughs> it's such a mum thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the band's name. Her name's Ella yes. Hooper. Mm. Come on, mum. Just go and listen to Lou Bega and leave me alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, and the Macarena oh. and and Venga Bus and oh, Ibiza yeah. and stuff. <laughs> that was my mum's see, jam. See what happens then. when we see what happens when we start later. It's just good crazy at the end it does get a bit sillier mm. but i've got I, I do have some some last words as well oh good what do you got uh, the the reason that i i question final fantasy today is because it's actually fresh in my mind at the moment there is, is a multiplayer mode which has just been released yeah so over the last uh over the last couple of days i think it was uh just before last week's podcast that it was released it downloaded for me over the weekend, it's about 
7 gig. Um, I just kept hitting pause on it because I was downloading other stuff. And yeah, it's all come through nicely now. So I'm going to kick it in the guts this week and have a bit of a play. Nice. So you'll tell us about that next week, no doubt. I will indeed. Nice. I think we're going to have some good stuff for next week. We're going to have play mm-hmm. fest. We're going to have uh, this um, Final Fantasy. There's going to be more of uh, Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, more of Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim VR. Yeah, it's, going to, it's going to be good. Good show. We're why we're getting ready to to go out with a bang for 2017. Um, with what is it? Four, three more shows. Three more three, shows. Three after more. This one. Three more shows after this one. So count down, everybody. We're gonna end. Yeah, and we're ending on episode one ninety nine. Yeah, get that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we make it back for two thousand and seventeen with episode two hundred, and we'll make that one a bit of a bang too. All right. Uh, well, I think uh, I think that's the uh, the end of the show. How do how do we finish the show again? So you you finish the show, and I'll I'll follow. Well, once again, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, make sure you check out all the bits and bobs, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And thank you very much for everyone who's gotten to this stage. We will see you next week. I have been Snoops. Oh, and I've been an impressed Lucas. You can do that every week. <laughs> <laughs> see, you later. see you next time, everyone. Well, here we are once again at the end of this week's show. If you're still hungry for more video game content, head over to the Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page and give us a like. We also have a heavy presence over on Twitter, so give at AussieGamers12 a follow. And also our YouTube channel is there waiting for you to give it the love that it deserves. This podcast is available for your convenience through iTunes, Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast.